So we've just looked at switching uh, before we actually move on to routing. One, one way that people have compared circuit switching to packet switching, especially datagram packet switching, think about driving on a road. When you drive on the road, it takes some time to get somewhere and the intersections are like the switches. We turn left, we turn right, or we go straight ahead and there may be some delay there. Circuit switching is like the case when maybe there's a VIP needing to travel from A to B and what happens is the police block off the, the road, the intersections, and allow that VIP, maybe the Prime Minister, to drive from A to B all the way through the highway or through the road without, without stopping at the intersections. That's like circuit switching. We set up a connection from source to destination. Once the connection is set up, we can send the data all the way through to the endpoint without any disruptions at the intermediate switches. Packet switching is like how we drive on the road. When we arrive at an intersection, we have to decide which way to go. And the problem that may arise is that when everyone else arrives at that same intersection, there may be a large queue there, people waiting at that intersection to, be, to go onto one of the output roads. So with packet switching, we just drive at our own speeds in our own directions. There's no setup in advance. But the problem is that we may have a large delay at the intersection or in our packet switching network, a large delay in the switches, a queuing delay. But the benefit of packet switching compared to circuit switching is that in circuit switching, when the police reserve the road for the VIP, but they're not travelling on it yet, no one else can use that road and it's very inefficient. The road's being unused when people would like to use it. So that's a, a, a comparison with road networks and communication networks. With that, how do we choose which roads to go via to reach our destination? How do we choose the path in advance? When I want to drive from here, the campus, into uh, somewhere in Bangkok, I want to go to Paragon and go shopping tonight, I need to choose a path to take. Which intersections will I go to and where will I turn at those intersections? So that's what routing's about, choosing the path from source to destination. And in fact, it comes before we send our data normally. So in this, back to our original example of a simple network, <coughs> We have some stations. I want to send data from A to F. I know at computer A, I want to reach F. Where will I send the data in our network? Any suggestions? Where am I going to send the data? Well, there's no choice at the start. I, from computer A perspective, I can only send to four, switch four. So there's no choice there. Switch 4 gets the data. Where can it send the data? Well, it's got three different options. Which one would you choose if you were Switch 4? Who would you send to next? Who would you choose? You'll Switch 4. Where are you going to send the data to get to F? 7. Why do you choose 7? Because it looks closer or it looks like a shortest way to get to F. Okay. So we need some way to make a decision. So there we made a decision that, okay, to reach F, I think some of you are thinking, well, there are multiple paths. The first thing to observe in our network, usually we have multiple paths to choose from. So we need to choose one. We normally just want one. So therefore we need to choose them somehow. We could randomly choose. Well, that'd be very simple, just, uh, just randomly pick one of those to send via. But for performance reasons, often we'd like to choose the best path. And I think some of you realise that maybe the best path from A to F is the shortest path. Shortest in what? Shortest in 
short in terms of what? Meters? Not necessarily. Maybe in this case the shortest in terms of the number of links, the fewest number of links. Okay? That is, we could think, assuming this is not to scale, maybe the shortest path from A to F in the number of links, one of them is 476. Four, four, we actually go via three switches. Another one is 456, the same length in terms of the number of links or switches. A longer path is 412356. Okay, so we could say choose the path with the least number of links in it. That's an easy and a very common approach that's used in, in routing. If we wanted to be more accurate, maybe we would like to consider other factors like the distance, maybe, maybe the distance not relevant and some other characteristics of the links and the devices. So, routing is a very important design issue in, in networks and the question is which path or route, so we use the same, either path or route to mean the same thing, which path should be taken from source to destination? That's our challenge. And the answer, the best path. Well, that's not a complete answer because we need to define what do we mean by best. Is it the path with the least number of links? Or is it the smallest total delay? Or is it the path that is the cheapest? Often in a network we need to pay to send data through a link. Choose the cheapest. So we need to define what do we mean by best? And once we know that, how do we choose it? What algorithms can we use to choose the path? So that's what we'll look at in this topic. In the examples like the one I just presented, we only have uh, uh, 10 or 15 devices and, and not many possible paths. In real networks, there may be hundreds of thousands of devices and many, many possible paths. So in fact, in choosing a path, even if we use a computer to choose the path, sometimes it's not easy to do it in a short amount of time. Okay, so it's much more complex than we see in the examples. Routing is necessary for both circuit and packet switch networks. Okay, in circuit switch, we need to choose the path or the, the, to set up the circuit. In packet switching, we need to choose a path for our packets to take to get to the destination. There may be some different issues. Packet switching and especially datagram packaging is, is a key part of the internet, so we're going to focus on packet switching from now on. So today we'll just introduce uh, the concept of routing. So what we want is some, some technique or an algorithm that says, given this source, given this destination, tell me the best path. That's what we need, a routing algorithm that will find me the best path from source to destination. Such an algorithm has a number of requirements. Some are obvious, some are a little bit more complex. The first one is maybe obvious. If I have a routing algorithm, and that algorithm takes as an input source and destination, it must return a correct path. What do I mean? Source is A, destination is F. I use my routing algorithm, my software, it takes as input A and F. It returns the path 4, 5, 2, 8 and 6. So the path 4, 5, 2, 8 and 6 is the answer for my best path from A to F. What's wrong with 4, 5, 2, 8 and 6 as a path? It's not an actual path in this network. So the, the, the point is that the algorithm, the software that calculates the path, must choose an actual path from source to destination. And note that the way that we're defining the path or, or talking about it is by the, the nodes or the switches that we pass through. The path from A to F can be 4, 7 and 6. 4, 6, 7 
is a different path. Right? The order matters. So our algorithm must to return a correct path. That's maybe obvious. We would like a way that when we calculate the route or the path, the routing algorithm is easy to calculate. It doesn't take much CPU to calculate. Uh, it's easy to implement. So that when someone has to write the code for that algorithm, they, they won't create bugs. And it's cheap. That is, again, not, not much CPU. So something easy is desirable, as with most sy systems we develop. The next thing. We'd like an algorithm which is robust. And what that means is if it chooses a path, and then we find that there's some error in the network, the algorithm may be able to adapt and choose a different path. My algorithm tells me to get to F, your path is 4, 7, and 6. But we discover that node 7 is not working, so what we'd like is an algorithm that will adapt and maybe choose an alternate path for us. Maybe four, five, six. And now I'll start sending my data across that different path. So when there are errors in the network, like node 7 fails, then we'd like an algorithm to be able to cope with that. That's all what robustness means. And usually that means finding alternate paths. So not just using this path forever, but find another one when there's a better one that arises. Or even maybe we notice that node 7 is, uh, maybe let's choose a different case. The algorithm initially, initially to choose as path 4, 5, and 6 is the best path. Maybe 7 is not here. 7 is not, uh, well, not a good example here. Let's say we want uh, to go from, where are two distinct paths? We want to go from B to D, right? B to D. The algorithm chooses one, two, three to D, easy. But we notice that switch two, as we're using that path and sending the data, we notice that switch two is busy. It's slowing down. Node C is sending a lot of data through it. We can think it's congested. So the performance is not so good when we're going via switch two. So what we'd like an algorithm to do is to say, OK, 1, 2, 3 was no good. Maybe you should start using 1, 4, 5, 3 as an alternate path to route around the problems. If there's an error at node 7, find a different path. Or if node 2 is working but is slower than we expected, then maybe find a different path. Now, the problem with this switching between paths is that sometimes what may arise is that, okay, we're sending our data one, two, and three. Then our algorithm tells us, uh, change, node two is busy. It's got a lot of data going through it. Change to one, four, five, three. Start sending your data one, four, five, three. But then the algorithm realizes node five is busy. So it says, go back to one, two, or three. That's better again. But then 2 gets busy again, because we're sending data through it, so it goes 1, 4, 5, 3. And we keep swapping between those two paths, because the algorithm uh, tries to choose the best one, but it may become unstable, in that we constantly switch between paths. That can be a bad outcome. Even though they are actually the best paths, changing paths too often can be bad for some data transfer. One thing that happens is that if we think of the, the delay, maybe the delay across the first path is reasonably short, three links, three switches, and the second path is quite long. Some applications, they can tolerate a long delay, but if the delay changes a lot, then the applications do not work so well. So sometimes we'd like to have constant performance. Even if it's not perfect performance, but keep it stable. So a routing algorithm should be stable in that it 
should try and find the best path that can use for a long period of time. The requirement of stability. And that conflicts with robustness sometimes. Choose the optimal path, choose the best one. Right, that's another requirement. We need to define what we mean by best. Be fair. And this is a hard one to explain by our example. We think a routing algorithm may find paths for all stations in the network. Find the path from A to F, find the path from B to D, and the path from C to E. Fairness is about try to make sure that those three paths give similar performance for each of those pairs of stations communicating. Don't choose a path which is great for A, it's great for B, but terrible for C. Try to choose paths such that each user gets about the same performance. That's the idea of fairness, be fair amongst the users. In some networks we have such a requirement that try to treat all users in the same manner. And there are some situations that arise that maybe in a routing algorithm would not provide fairness. Uh, last one while we're here. Coming back to this issue, we want to know the best path. We're using 1, 2 and 3 to get to D. We realise 2 is busy. It's slowing down. How do we know that at source B, that switch 2 is slowing down? Often we need to exchange some messages, maybe from switch 2, send some feedback back to B saying, I'm busy right now, maybe you should use a different path. So to support routing, we need to exchange some information between the devices and that creates overhead. So the last requirement is try to be efficient in choosing the best algorithm. Make sure that you minimise the amount of processing done on the devices and minimise the amount of overhead that we, we create to learn about what's happening in the network. And in the subsequent discussion, we'll, we'll see examples of efficiency or especially the overhead, what can create the overhead and the ways to it we can try to minimise that. So we'll keep these in mind as we go through routing approaches. For today, we'll just introduce the terminology uh, to set up the different approaches we'll go through. And the terminology, th those terms we'll define through this example network. So now I'm not going to draw stations and switches. We'll just be general and talk about nodes. Whether it's a switch or, or something else, it doesn't matter. Routing applies in general to a network. And we can think of a network as a graph. We have a set of nodes, of vertices or edges connecting them. So in this example we have six nodes, six computing devices that want to communicate and the lines between those nodes tell us something about the links between those nodes. So the first thing we have a link. So there is a link from node 1 to node 4 and in routing, we'll often, we'll often consider the links differently in each direction. So let's say we have a cable from node 1 to node 4, and it's a full duplex cable, we, or a full, full duplex link, and that we can send in both directions. We'll often consider the, well, sometimes we'll consider the case that the directions that we send in that may maybe get different performance. And that may have an impact on routing. And that's what we're showing here, that we have a link from node 1 to node 4, and we'll also think we have a link from node 4 to node 1. We could have a simplex cable. That is, a link from node 1 to node 4, but no link back to node 1. That's not very common nowadays, but it's possible that we can send in one direction, but not back. So we'll draw two arrows to indicate the each direction. So we have links between nodes. 
Uh, a path is defi <coughs> defined as a set of links from source to destination or the set of nodes that we traverse. A path from node 1 to node 6 is node 1, node 2, node 3, node 6. So we could write the path down as node 1, n2, n3, n6. Or we could just say it's the link from node 1 to node 2, the link from node 2 to node 3, and the link from node 3 to node 6. It's the same. Okay? The set of nodes we go through, or the set of links we go through. That's a path. A path can consist of a single link. There's a path from node 5 to node 6. It is direct from node 5 to node 6. That's still a path. There's also other paths. So there may be multiple paths. To, to traverse a single link, we introduce the term of a hop. We take one hop. So we can say, for the path from node 1 to node 6, via 2 and 3, there are three hops. We hop from node 1 to node 2, node 2 to node 3, and node 3 to node 6. So that's a path with three hops. And often when we think about shortest path, we think about the least number of hops, the one with the least number of links. So hop just means a link is traversed. Just some terminology. What's the least hop path from node 1 to node 6? The least hop path. Node 1 to node 6, what's the least hop path? Write it down. What's our answer? That is, what's the path from node 1 to node 6? There are multiple paths. Which path has the least number of hops? What is the least number of links in the path? Node 1 to node 3 is one hop. Node 3 to node 6 is a second hop. You cannot get lower than that in this particular example. So we say, quite simply, node 1, node 3, node 6. And some cases we'll use the hop count as an indicator of the, the best path. It's a very simple way to say, OK, the best path from node 1 to node 6 is the one with the least number of hops. It's very easy to, to measure. What other terminology do we have? The, uh, we can talk about neighbours. Okay, so the neighbours of node 5 are nodes 4, 3 and 6. The neighbours are the nodes which we have direct links to. Node 2 has three neighbours, node 1, node 4, node, node 3. And we can talk about neighbours of neighbours and so on. The neighbours are uh, usually known in advance. If you think node 5 is a computer, a switch in a network, and it's got three cables plugged into it. And at the other end of end point of each of those cables are nodes 4, 3 and 6. When someone can, sets up node 5 and they plug in the cables, they know who's at the other end point of the cable. Okay? We'd normally know our neighbours when we set up our device. So we'd normally assume that node 5 knows that the other end point of this link is node 4, of this link is 3 and this link is 6. But when we set up node 5, it may not know that there's a node 2 or node 1 in the network. Maybe on the other side of the country. 
So we'll have to deal with that and we'll look at ways for how to learn that. We'll assume that we usually know our neighbours in advance. A topology or the topology is just the arrangement of nodes and links. This is one topology. If I remove node 6, I have a different topology. If I cut out the link from 4 to 5, it's a different topology. And the last thing is these numbers, the cost. What we'll do in routing is that to find the best path from source to destination, we'll use what we call least cost routing. We'll assign a cost to every link, like these numbers on these arrows here. We'll assign some cost. It doesn't mean financial cost, not necessarily. Some general cost. And then we'll use an algorithm to find the path which gives us the least cost, where the cost of the path is the sum of the cost of the links on that path. So what these numbers are an example of the costs assigned to using each link. And we'll talk about different ways, but the cost may be related to the delay of the link, the performance in terms of throughput or data rate, the financial costs, the security of the link, the, the number of hops and other factors. So there are different ways to measure cost. But once we have a way, we allocate a number to the link indicating the cost. Higher the cost, the worse that link is in our path. Given that we've assigned cost to our network, what's the least cost path from node 1 to node 6? Find the least cost path from node 1 to node 6. The path from 1 to 6 which gives us the, least co the smallest cost. Where the cost of a path is the sum of the costs of the links on, those path, on that path. Least cost path. You need to check several. Okay, well, you may find it. You found it? Found it? Where? Point. Four, five, and six. What's the cost of four, five, six? The cost of the path from one, four, five, six is four units. So our least hop path from the previous one, the, the number of hops, was one, three, six. But that has a cost of 1 to 3 is 5 units, and 3 to 6 is 5 units. The cost from 1 to 6 is 10 via 3. There are other paths from 1 to 6 with a lower cost. And if you look through, 1 to 4 to 5 to 6 has a cost of 1 plus 1 plus 2 of 4 units. So the total path cost is 4. One, four Five, six is the answer there. And just so we remember, the cost, the total path cost was four in that case. If I give you a, a larger network with maybe uh, 30, 40 nodes, many links, how are you going to find the least cost path? So I give you the costs. How will you find the least cost path in a network from any source destination pair? It's hard to look, okay? Even this small one, it's hard to some cases find what which one is. You need to check many cases. What algorithm can you use to do it quickly? Find the least cost path in a network. What's the algorithm? It's named after some person. It starts with a D. Dijkstra algorithm is one of them. Okay, I think you've studied in, in some other course the Dijkstra algorithm is, a least, is an algorithm for finding the least cost path from a 
one node actually finds from one node normally other nodes. Okay? So there are algorithms that will do it for us. We will not study that. We'll assume that we, uh, we have some algorithm that, that will do it. Bellman forward is another algorithm that will find it in a different way. So there are algorithms for finding the least cost path. Coming back to the costs, note that the costs between a pair of nodes in each direction may be different. Like this example from node 1 to node 4, the cost is 1. To go backwards from 4 to 1, the cost is higher. It's, that's possible. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. Why would it be different? Consider many factors, but a simple one you may know of is if you've got internet at home, you may have ADSL internet, or you may have used ADSL internet. Anyone? You have an ADSL router at home. And what download speed do you get? How many megabits per second? When you go to your ISP, you usually pay per month, and it depends upon the download speed, how much you pay. For example, I've got one which is 10 megabits per second download speed. But the upload speed is not the same. It's one megabit per second. So in that one link from my node to the ISP node, coming from ISP to me is fast, 10 megabits per second. Going up is slow. So the same link has different performance. So if the costs are associated to the data rate or that performance, that's why we may have different costs. Because on one link between the same pair of nodes, we may have different performance in each direction. So that's why we may have different ones. So we've introduced the terminology. What we do in routing in networks is once we know the network topology, we know the nodes and links, and we know the costs of those links, so we're going to assign those numbers, then we simply use a least cost routing algorithm, like Dijkstra or others, is used to find from any node to any other node the least cost route, the least cost path. And that's the path we use. But the challenges that we're left with, which criteria do we use to assign a cost? Is cost financial cost, delay, throughput, something else? We'll look at them. When do we choose a path? Do we choose one today and use it for the next year? Or do we use it today, choose it today and then choose five minutes later, recalculate, maybe things change? Who chooses the path? Is it the source node, the intermediate nodes, or maybe we have some special server that calculates for everyone? And when we, to learn about the topology, the link costs and the current usage links, we need to know that to calculate the, the least cost path. Where do we get that information from? And how often do we update that information, especially as the costs may change? So that's what we'll look at in the rest of this topic of the techniques for answering some of those questions. We'll stop there and we'll continue on that in the next lecture tomorrow. <coughs>